Hey YouTube, T1 Glistener Elf here, rocking with Matthew. This is my commander. I have two commanders. This is the one when I'm being serious. This is Animar Soul of Elements. This is I don't want the game to go past turn four. The commander. Uh, this is this is fun. This is fun. Turn four or five. All right. So real quick, pro white, pro black. That that's nice, but whatever. What we really care about is whenever you cast a creature spell, you get a plus one plus one on this guy. Okay, that's fun. Deal commander damage. No, we have something a little bit more. And then it has a creature spells you cast cost one less to cast for each plus one plus one counter. Step one, spam a bunch of creatures. Step two, get a bunch of plus one plus one counters. Step three, step four is profit. And you'll see what that is in just a bit. So I'm going to leave you right here, buddy, for a bit. Uh, so t first of all, in a deck like this, you're going to have to run a lot of mana dorks. And I'm just going to run through them really quickly, give an explanation where needed. For these first ones are largely interchangeable. We wish we had more one mana, uh, mana dorks. We have Birds of Paradise, we have Wild Canter, and sadly we, we can't run something like Noble Hierarch, etc. But we get Bloom Tender, two mana, but actually one mana. Anytime you see that, anytime you see that, ignore it. I mean, not at first, but it's going to go away really quickly. So this is going to make three mana in this deck. Uh, it will eventually. Then there's Beast Color Savant, which, yeah, you pay one, not two, you pay one for it, but you're going to get one back because it has haste. And yeah, it only works on creatures, but hey, everything's a creature. There's literally, I think, one non-creature in the deck that's not a land. Rattleclaw Mystic, which makes our colors, that's fine, but you can also morph, and when you unmorph, you make more mana, so that can help. And also, when you morph it, you know how much morphing costs with Animar? Potentially zero, so that'll be fun. You have Sylvan Carry added. Uh, one mana, O3 hexproof defender, Birds of Paradise. You have Voyaging Seder to untap some lands. Th this is basically just yet another one, but there are there is a synergy. We have a land that untaps to make a lot more than just one. Uh, so those are our mana dorks. I'm gonna keep them right up here. Next, we have the additional land stuff. Now you do need to have enough early plays that you can make Animar have counters really quickly. So some of these will seem a little odd until you remember that they're basically turning on Animar Giggity. We have <laughs> Sylvan Ranger. This just enters the battlefield, get a bit library, get a, get a basic land from your library. So easy enough. We have Soccer Tribe Elder. Sacks itself to get you another basic land. There's seven in the deck. Wood Elves will get a forest, not a basic forest, a forest for one mana. And it doesn't come in tapped. Uh, Solemn Simulacrum, Sad Robot. Shout out to that... Oh man, who's the invitational winner for this one? I can't remember, I'm so sorry. Uh, but it's a zero mana, get a search, put a basic land in tapped, and when it dies you get a draw card. And then we have Silverglade Elemental, which is a bigger version of Wood Elves. That's it, gets a forest, puts it on the battlefield, and those are your extra land ones. Now, now we get to the meat of the deck. All of these say draw a card. In one way or another, they say draw a card. Elvish Visionary, draw a card. Wild Blossoms, draw a card. F -f 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 the Lost, draw a card. <laughs> or two, but yeah, one. Alchemist Apprentice, draw a card. Merchant of Secrets, draw a card. Council of Advisors, draw a card. Sky Scanner, zero mana, draw a card. Mole Drifter, draw two cards. Wretched Griff, Zero mana, draw a card. Beast Whisper, whenever you cast a creature, draw a card. Primordial Sage, whenever you cast a creature, draw a card. May you may. Uh, Soul of the Harvest, whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield, draw a card. You see, Hydroid Crisis, two mana, draw a whole lot of cards, and it's a flying trample. Lots of lots of power toughness. It gets it gets silly. All right. You also gain life. You also gain life. That's I mean that matters. That matters. <laughs> All right, next we have our card selection. We have Foul Emissary, which is one mana, look at the top four cards of your library, put a creature in. When it's when you sacrifice, blah, 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 no one cares. We have, <laughs> we have Seagate Oracle, which is uh, ETB, look at the top two cards, one in your hand, the other in the bottom. Raven Familiar, look at the top three cards, one in your hand, the other's on the bottom. Tower Geist, uh, one in your hand, and then the other in your graveyard. Gurmog Drowner. You have to exploit, but you're going to exploit, and if you have nothing else, you'll exploit itself. Look at the top four, one goes in your hand, and the others go in your graveyard. So th there's your card selection for the deck. I'm glad that magic's teaching us to our exploit ourselves. <laughs> that's, that's it. <laughs> uh, next we have two Cascade cards. Uh, th these are, okay, so Ethereum Horn Sculptor is two mana, Cascade from six. So that's fair enough, whatever. You can also return it to your hand to do it again. Yeah, it's just value. Maelstrom Wanderer. Uh, three mana, it ha gives all creatures you control haste, then you cascade, then you cascade again, and you're doing it from eight. 
Uh, the fact that it grants haste is awesome and enables a lot of stuff, but also you just get to cascade and cascade again. I hear that's pretty good. Okay, stupid stuff. Trophy Mage, you're, you're, you're actually going to be held for a little bit. Okay. The Trophy Mage gets exactly one card in the deck, and that's all. That's all we care about. But these are the tutors. You have Imperial Recruiter, which goes and gets a creature with power two or less. Oh my god, that glare. We have Fierce Empath, which does the opposite. It gets a creature CMC six or greater. We have Brutalizer Exarch, which ETBs, you get to choose two. You can either put a creature card from your deck on top of it, or... You can uh, put target non-creature permanent on the bottom, you know, whatever. You have <laughs> Conduit of Ruin, zero mana. Uh, when you cast it, not ETB, when you cast it, search for a colorless creature CMC 7 or greater and put it on top. And then the first creature spell you cast, you know, no one cares because they're all going to cast, they're all going to cost way less than that anyway because, you know, Animar. Then we have Survival of Fittest, the creature. It's Fauna Shaman, so tap it and pay a green. Discard a creature card, search for a creature card, add it to your hand. Combo Enabler, yay! And then we also have the most important one, Trophy Mage. Trophy Mage, when it ETBs, you get a search for an artifact card with CMC 3, exactly 3. There's exactly one card that'll, that'll actually be a target for that. That's how important it is in the deck. I haven't gotten to it yet, because I haven't gotten to it yet. You'll see in just a moment. No, no, never mind, never mind. You're no. keeping the suspense. We're gonna do it now, we're gonna do it now. <laughs> These are the bounce cards. First and foremost, we have Cloudstone Curia. This thing is broke. This enables so many infinite combos in the deck. Whenever a non-artifact permanent comes into play under your control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. When you cast a creature, you get to return a creature to your hand. When you get to ca you cast that creature, return to your da -da 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 -da. Okay, how are they going to be free? Well, we've already seen some stuff that's colorless. Like, say, Conduit of Ruin. That's a color... It's not an artifact, but it's colorless. You can get that to free. Bounce something else. What are we going to bounce? Well, we have Fairy Imposter, which can bounce stuff, too. We have Shrieking Jake, which... Drake. Shout us to Drake, which can bounce stuff, too. We have Dream Stalker, which can bounce stuff, too. We have Ancestral Statue, which is a one-mana... Com <laughs> a one-card combo with Animar. You cast this, gives Animar a counter, it makes it cost less cast it. When you get to four counters, this thing is free, and it just bounces itself endlessly. So you just do this for a little while, and Animar has 100 sextillion counters on it. That's always fun. That's fun magic. Um, <laughs> now, now, we have stuff that actually untaps, and this is where it gets really silly. So, Cloud of Fairies costs two mana, but actually costs one mana, and untaps two lands you control. So already you see that this combos with Cloudstone Curio and any one mana, one mana, spell in your deck. So cl Cloud of Fairies with one of the draw cr cards, draw all the cards in your deck. Uh, anything that's zero mana, you're going to net mana every time you do this. This gets silly. Peregrine Drake, even better! This comes into play, untaps five lands. Pelagron untaps seven lands! And also one card combos with Animar once you have enough mana to pay for it and its ability. Um, and that'll give you infinite ETBs. If you have net one mana, you'll also make infinite mana. <sighs> oh, and it flies. That matters. Then we have Great Whale, which also untaps seven. Yay! We have Deceiver Exarch and Pestermite and Zealous Conscripts. We don't even have Kiki Jiki. We don't need Kiki Jiki. Kiki Jiki's red, red, red actually sometimes hurts. But yeah, you have Deceiver Exarch to untap something. Pestermite to untap something, and yes, they can also tap. Zealous Construct to steal their commander, or also to untap something. Yay! <laughs> this is fun. This is fun. Speaking of, okay, so infinite combos. We, Cloudstone Curio, anything, basically, at this point. Oblivion Sower, mill all the cards from your opponent's decks. All of them. Every, one, every time you cast it, target opponent exiles the top four cards of their library. The rest of it you don't care about. Yeah, you can put lands into play from that, but... Really, what you're doing is you're just doing this to make everybody mill all the cards in their deck. Artisan of Kozilek. Return all the creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's when you cast it, but again, Cloudstone Curio, we're going to loop this to do it any number of times. Kozilek the Butcher of Truth. Draw all the cards in your deck. Annihilator 4. Ulamog. Ceaseless Hunger. Exile all the permanents that your opponents control. Ulamog the Infinite Gyre. Destroy all the permanents they control. See, I'm, I'm smiling, but I shouldn't be. <laughs> You're about to experience this in just a bit. Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, Phantasmal Image, it, these are the copiers. It just simply comes in as a copy of something, a creature. That's nice and easy for one mana, of course, as you do. 
Phyrexian Metamorph for zero mana and two life. Or, or one mana, but really. Okay, so you can have it come in as a copy of any artifact or creature. Yes. All right, so there we go. That's pretty simple. We have some alternate win cons in the deck. In addition to going infinite with stupid shit up there, we have Crater Hoof Behemoth to give your team infinity, infinity, basically. Not really, but yeah, basically. We ha And haste. It has haste. Uh, we have Genesis Hydra, which once you have infinity mana, this just gets anything out of your deck and is infinitely huge. Not infinitely, I know that's not actually a term in magic, you can't actually go infinite, but you all know what I mean. And then we have Walking Ballista, which, again, you take all of your infinite mana, dump it into a Walking Ballista, and then throw it at them. You've seen the movie Elf, the, the, he's, chunking the he's chucking the snowballs at Yeah, that, with Walking Ballista. <laughs> that Ballista was made for walking. <laughs> One of these days. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no one was hearing me saying. All right. So these are some utility creatures. You have duplicate to exile stuff. You know, you don't have enough with Ulamog and other Ulamog for getting rid of things. You also have duplicate to do that. It is an artifact, so you can't loop it the same way that it's the Eldrazi, but it also gets bigger as a result. Ta da! Then you have Vizier of the Menagerie to play creatures off the top of your deck, and you may spend mana as if it, though, as if it were mana of any color to cast creature spells. So that's even easier. You have Garuk's Horde, which is basically strictly worse Vizier. Yeah, it has Trample. Yeah, it's bigger on its own. But it costs green, green. No one cares about the rest of it. And uh, you can cast it, but you can't spend mana as if it were mana of any color. And then you have Platinum Angel, so that you can't lose the game. And it's free. Because of course it is. This is a fair deck. Now for lands. Seven basics, four forests, because that's the most important basic, two islands and a mountain, and then we have Gaia's Cradle. So if you get the Voyaging Seder out from earlier, this makes even more mana. It's silly. It's stupid. I love it. I love it. Uh, next we have, I'm just realizing, because I've kept them all at the top. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. Uh, sorry, all this dead space at the bottom. We get to enjoy the art. Yeah. That's a pretty cool art. That's your playmat, man. I dig it. All right, so Gruel Lands, we have a few of them. We have, and for you're going to notice the theme here. So we have the Gruel Fetch Land, we have Taiga, so the Dual Land, we have a Shock Land, we have the Fast Land, we have the Buddy Land, we have Grove of the Burn Willows, and we have the Pain Land. For Simic, we have the Fetch Land, the Dual Land, the Shock Land, the Fast Land, the Buddy Land, the Filter Land, and the Pain Land. For is it or yeah, for is it we have a, a fetch land, a dual land, a shock land, and a fast land. Now you, you don't need to spend this much money on it, and by this much money I mean. But, <laughs> but I used to actually have the cards, so just to dis just to dispel the illusion there real quick. Now as for our flag color stuff, we have all right. So we have command tower because EDH. And it's not a monocolor deck, so why not? Ancient Ziggurat, it doesn't tap for Cloudstone Curio. It taps for everything else in the deck. We have City of Brass and Mana Confluence, which are usually just the same card. There are a few cases where it's not, but usually it's the same card. You're going to pay one for everything. Now, these actually do matter, I should say. For your Pain Lands and for City of Brass Mana Confluence, there are some infinite combos that you can't do if these are part of it because you're going to be taking one each time. So you'll be limited on how many times you can make the loop. Originally when I made this deck it didn't have these cards. That's the reason why. Still, the fact that they're untapped and can make mana of any color makes up for it, I would say. Next we have Reflecting Pool. Just makes one mana of any color as long as it's not your first land, basically. Path of Ancestry. Enters tapped. Makes one mana of any color. And if you happen to use it on an elemental, you get to scry one. Cool. Yay! Uh, also, Frontier... Bivouac? Bivouac, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Those French words. <laughs> <laughs> Next we have Opal Palace, because it's actually relevant to be able to have Animar come back down with a plus one, plus one counter on it. So, fair enough. I said, let's kick that over real quick. Don't forget to edit that out. I mean, uh, <laughs> then Vivid Grove, just as another... Now, this one can just have for green, but it's also all colors. Your playgroup may not appreciate off-color fetch lands, in which case you can make it another basic or something else. I'm running Averting Catacombs here. You know, there is a, uh, a buddy land for Is It. That's probably what it should be, actually. It should be the buddy land for Is It, if you don't want to do Averting Catacomb. Whatever works. 
And there you go. Ta-da! That is Animar EDH. Where did Animar go? Right here. <laughs> <laughs> I need caffeine. And this deck is disgusting. I have taken down a table of five other people that were all just going against me with just this deck. Um, it's fun! It's really fun! But you will make every game into Arch Enemy, so do be warned. It's not unbeatable if they know what to bring against you. You are still a creature based combo deck and if they hate on creatures and if they hate on combos then they're gonna hate on you but if they're not if they're just playing their their fun deck and you want to be the fun police for some reason then ta-da congratulations on not having friends anymore and that's why you and I are not friends anymore hey. I mean, uh, <laughs>